Why are you always alone? Why don't you leave the house? You're so cold. Where are your emotions hiding? Where are your fears? Why are you so quiet? Stop! I have emotions. They're not hiding, and I do spend time alone, but I like it that way. I guess you could say I'm an introvert. Oh, hi. I'm Becca, by the way. Where do I begin? I'm not the type of person who particularly enjoys large groups. I prefer the quiet moments. Those solitary activities throughout the day. Lounging down with a good book, a cup of tea, and the occasional TV soap opera. And what can I say? I don't socialize much, but I talk to others when the opportunity arises. But sometimes people have made assumptions about me before I could even explain. Last year, our class worked in groups for a book project on Herman Melville's classic 1851 novel. I get a bit scared when it comes to group work, mainly due to all the conflict and noise that can come along with it. But for this project, I decided to put my best foot forward and hoped for the best. The assignment was on my favorite novel after all. Expecting questions about the gripping characters and daring tales, I couldn't wait to listen to what others had to say about the story. But somehow being paired with classmates I hardly knew, the questions turned on me. As a group, we had to introduce ourselves. I was the only one nobody really knew. Everyone in my group happened to already be friends. Just my luck. So when the spotlight shined on me to explain my story, who I was, what I liked, I was suddenly bombarded with questions faster than you could say Moby Dick. Ah, a classic novel. But the questions weren't on the characters, or whales. Instead, I was met with questions about me. So, Becca, why are you always alone? Don't you have any friends? Oh, yes, I- But you never talked to anyone here. I thought you hated us. Oh, no, I love building really close relationships. It's just- Oh, that's surprising. You're usually so cold and unemotional. Those words hit me so hard. I simply nodded in response. I was hurt. Now was my chance for an opportunity to talk about something I loved in contrast to small talk I dreaded. But for the rest of the class, the girls talked about their own things, straying off from the book. And while a few of them looked at me with kind eyes, welcoming me to join the conversation, I felt safer listening in. Was I appearing cold? Did they really think I was unemotional? Why couldn't I socialize like the characters in my favorite books? This is very common for introverts. Others comment on you preferring time alone, and while I did enjoy my time alone, a part of me didn't want to miss out on new friendships and experiences I could have if I spoke up more. Spending more time in the social scene. Although I didn't necessarily like small talk, I needed to master its art. How could I cultivate the skills to talk about the sunny days and rainy nights of my town? The best sushi places I've been to this year. That taco stand with the greatest two-for-one special anyone has ever tasted. Well, I guess I could look forward to talking about that. <laughs> Tacos. But then I realized small talk can turn into a deeper conversation if you start with something you're passionate about, not necessarily tacos, although who isn't passionate about them? Next class, we dispersed into our book groups again. While the group was discussing another class, I sat there thinking about my favorite books, my favorite characters, some of the things they might say in this scenario, some of the passions they talk about. Many scenes had characters discussing what they loved. Their dialogue was witty, silly, and even awkward. The characters shared their passion and had a voice. And when they expressed it to others, that was my favorite part. I decided to take a page from their book. While I enjoy spending time alone and will continue to relish in my solitude, I will make the most out of the interactions I do have. I realized talking about these characters, these stories, was the answer I had been looking for. No, it wasn't the weather, but it was a good start. Finally, a break in the conversation. I decided I'd be the one to bring the focus back on the book. Not only because I wanted to test out my small talk on the novel I was passionate about, but also because we needed to move on to the project. I took a deep breath. So, they stopped, turned my way. What did you guys think of the practicality 300-page complex essay on whales in the middle of the book? I loved that part. You know, not a lot of people knew what whales looked like back then. I heard most paintings of whales back then were inaccurate. I think the chapter highlighting the blowhole of the whale was riveting. Ah, <sighs> whale small talk. Who would have thought? Beats the weather. I was, in a way, at home, a great listener and contributor. I had found my voice, 
even if it be bizarrely enough through my passion for whales. One particular whale, at least. After that, I looked to my hobbies and passions as a great conversation starter. While I didn't necessarily make friends with that group of people, I gained newfound confidence in a bit of passionate small talk. Sometimes with small talk, you need to think on your feet. Bring your hidden improviser to light. One way, I continued to learn from the books I read, observing how characters engage in light chatter. I watched television and noted how simple it could be to start an engaging conversation. Sometimes, not so much. I observed life, social interactions. How did my friends react to that situation, to that response? It's not that I shouldn't be myself. I surely still am. I'm just learning how to use my voice in a way that others can hear what I have to say. I share my fears of over-socializing with my closest friends, but each day that fear is a little bit smaller. I even feel more connected to who I am, and now I can express that part further. My advice to introverts? Focus on that feeling you get when talking about something you're passionate about. When others are talking about their passions, relish in their excitement, even if you can't relate as much. Smile if you feel inclined to do so. It brightens the mood. Use friendly hand gestures to make your point. And if someone feels like engaging in small talk, it's not always so bad. The weather has been good lately. I still enjoy my alone time more than a crowded party, but I think twice before passing up on an opportunity to meet someone new and discuss something we both may love. It can be easier to only listen in on the topics discussed, but someone out there wants to hear what you think too. I now like to play both parts in the conversation because although I'm a fantastic listener, I have something to say as well, even if the topic is on whales. So there you have it, my story. I hope it helped. And if you're an extrovert, I hope you learned something new about some of us introverts. It will take time if you're looking to get better at a bit of socializing, so don't push yourself. Start slow and take one step at a time. Trust me, that way you'll master the art of small talk. So, which tips from Becca's story did you find useful? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? What passions will you talk about? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and share it with a friend. Subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.